So you caught the running bug and now you're ready to start building on your running shoe rotation. Hi, I'm Emlyn Jade, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a few things to consider when it comes to building your running shoe rotation. But wait a minute, you're probably wondering, why do I need to rotate through a lot of pairs of shoes? Isn't one pair good enough? So you're 100% right. When it comes to building a shoe rotation, it depends on a few things. Number one, why are you running? Are you running to get better times? Are you running for fun? Second, what's your training volume gonna look like? Are you gonna be running once a week, three times a week, are you gonna be training for a marathon, which means your volume is gonna be significantly higher versus someone who's only running for fun. The third is terrain type. Are you gonna be running on trails? Are you gonna be running on road or both? The fourth thing to consider are the type of runs that's gonna be included in your training. Are there gonna be easy runs in there, tempo work, speed runs, long runs, you name it. And lastly, your budget. Obviously, the more budget you have, the more shoes you can put in your rotation, although not necessary. But if you're working with a very tight budget, you can get away with fewer shoes. You can really get away with one, especially if you're just starting out or if you're training for shorter distances like the 5K or the 10K. However, if you start building on your running journey and you start ramping up on all those miles, like say for example, you're starting your marathon training, there's a couple of reasons why you should rotate through a couple pairs of different shoes. The first reason is that rotating Rotating shoes helps reduce the risk of injuries. So if you're running in that same pair of shoes over and over again, not only are you putting more wear and tear into the shoes, but you're also putting repetitive strain into your legs. There's actually a study done on 254 runners where they noticed that the runners who rotated through different pairs of shoes actually experienced less injury. Because different shoes are used for different functions, they're going to be built differently. So depending on your run and how you run and how you use those shoes it's going to impact your body in a different way rotating through all those different shoes will help minimize that risk of injury so this also leads to my second point of why you would want to rotate through shoes as i mentioned earlier depending on the type of run you might want to use a different type of shoe so for example if you're going to be spending a long time out there on the pavement you're going to want something a little bit more cushioned so that you feel more comfortable the longer you run versus if you're doing a speed workout and you want to feel really quick you want to have that really fast leg turnover, then you're going to want something that feels very lightweight on your feet, something with maybe a little bit less cushion. I also do want to preface that what might work for me might not necessarily work for other people. So I do recommend going to a shoe store, get your feet assessed by an associate. They'll probably take a look at your running gait, what your preferences are, if you have any history of injuries, and they'll be able to provide what shoe fits best for you. So next we're going to go through what types of shoes to include in your shoe rotation, depending on your experience with running and what your preferences are. I do want to preface that I am a Saucony ambassador, so I'm super grateful that they were able to gift me all these different shoes that I was able to try out, as well as determine which shoe would be best for my training as well as my races. Let's start with a daily trainer. This is best for those who are just starting out their running journey, or if you consider yourself a beginner runner, or if you have a tighter budget and you're looking for something that you can use in any types of runs, whether that's your easy run or a long run or even a speed run. So daily trainer is perfect for any type of run this is what they say the jack of all trades master of none so it would be very versatile in different types of runs but it doesn't necessarily specialize in one run so it's not necessarily the best when it comes to speed runs it's not necessarily the best when it comes to long runs but it does the job if you need a pair that is for all types of runs. My go-to daily trainer would be the Kinvara 14s. I believe this is typically used for speed runs because it is very lightweight. However, the newest model actually has more of a cushion, but it isn't as thin as the previous model, which I don't mind because now I can use it on my easier runs as well as my longer or my shorter longer runs. Another pair that I like as a daily trainer are the Ride 16s. I would say that the Ride 16s have a bit more of a thick cushion cushioning than the Kinvara 14s. It feels a little bit heavier, not so much, it's very minimal, but it is still quite responsive. Um, these could be used for tempo runs and I actually like to use these for runs that are longer than an hour and a half to maybe two-ish hours. I would say that these are quite a versatile trainer that could be used for your daily runs and it gives you a pretty soft ride as well. So say that you are kind of past that beginner stage of running and you want to start picking up that pace. You want to start including some speed runs into your training routine. So this is where you want to have speed shoes 
shoes within your shoe rotation. Speed shoes are definitely a lot lighter and a lot more faster and responsive compared to say like the daily trainer. Within the speed shoe bubble, you can actually break this down into two more categories. I would break this down into your speed work shoe and then you have a pair for race days. Now, the reason why I break these down into two categories are because there are special shoes that people would use for race days. Now, I'll get to that in a bit. Let's talk about speed shoes that you would use in your speed workouts. I actually use the Kinvara 14s as well during my speed workouts. I typically use this for shorter speed sessions, so like interval training, just because it feels so light. However, if I start to increase the distance in my speed workouts or if I'm starting to gravitate more towards tempo runs, I would then use the Endorphin Speed 3s. It has a little bit more cushion than say the Kinvara 14s, but what I really like about this, it has the speed roll technology, which means the foam is boat shaped, which gives me that momentum to propel me forward. The second subcategory within speed shoes would be the race day shoe, and the reason why I put this in a different section. I would probably just categorize this all together separately. These are the types of shoes that you'd probably want to keep fresh and really just save them for race day. Typically, people who have race shoes, these types of shoes would have a carbon plate, which makes them feel a lot lighter. So if you are looking to race and you are chasing a personal best, I would recommend getting a race shoe that would just feel super fresh when you are ready to go and chase that PB. And the race shoe that I like to use is the Endorphin Pro 3s. It's very similar to the Speed 3s because it's got that boat shape technology, which is the speed roll tech. So again, it gives me that momentum to propel me forward, but it does have that carbon plate, so it feels super light. So the next pair of shoes would be cushion shoes, and these are typically shoes used for when you know your daily trainer that you use for easy runs aren't enough and you're looking for something that will give you more support for those tired legs especially after a speed work day you just need something to give you that cushiony something that's like that just feels like pillows under your feet the pair of shoes that i like to use for my recovery runs are the triumph 21s as you can see the cushion on here is quite thick so it definitely gives me a lot more of a soft softer ride, especially when you start getting a taste of racing or speed runs or some serious tempo work. These are gonna be your best friend when it comes to those recovery runs. Sometimes I also use the Rise 16s for my recovery runs, but this is typically used when I'm training for something of shorter distances. So like the 5K or the 10K, I tend to use these for my easy slash recovery runs. But if I'm putting in a lot of miles, say like the half or the marathon, then I definitely switch more towards the Triumph 21s that have a lot more cushion. So those were some of the shoes that you can consider adding to your rotation. Those are the shoes that I like to include as part of my running shoe rotation. This is all dependent based on your experience and what kind of things you're looking for when it comes to running. And remember, what might work for me might not necessarily work for you. So I highly, highly recommend going to a shoe store to get your feet assessed and they'll be able to provide the right shoe that best suits you. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in a later video. Bye!